Hey Star Trek fans, Dan Gunther here bringing you my review of the latest episode of Star Trek Discovery Season 3, Episode 8, The Sanctuary. Quick reminder that the first part of this review will be spoiler free and after that I'll get into spoilers as per usual. So if you don't want to be spoiled as to the contents of this episode, be sure to click away when you hear that warning. So first of all, I have to say I really enjoyed this episode. I think it's a continuation of kind of the high points that uh, Discovery has been displaying so far this season with a couple little falters along the way, but this episode is definitely a strong one. Uh, we get some great character moments for Book and kind of his backstory, as well as, of course, for Burnham and her relationship with Book. We also see some movement on a few of the plots for other characters who've had some developments this season, uh, both kind of main characters as well as kind of the more secondary cast and, and even guest characters who have uh, joined up with us over the course of the last few episodes. Uh, so it, it's been really interesting. I, I, th I feel like there's a, a definite through line of a, uh, a theme that's running through this episode that I'll get into on the other side of the spoiler, which I really appreciated. I, I don't want to say too much without giving away the plot, so maybe I'll just wrap up by saying definitely a good episode, a lot of heart in this, maybe a little bit of kind of woo-woo pseudoscientific stuff, but that's definitely something that Star Trek is no stranger to, so it's certainly forgivable in this episode as well. Uh, yeah, so from there, I think I'll say let's get into the spoilers. And if you don't want to be spoiled for The Sanctuary, I'd suggest clicking away now. So in this episode, we get a trip to Book's home planet, which has been kind of teased over the last uh, a few episodes in the past. And we get to meet his brother, uh, brother by not not biologically, but by choice, I guess. Uh, so there's we learned some interesting things about Book. I'm really curious about this character as to his, his actual nature. Uh, I, I don't think he's fully human. I, I think there's some other influences there, but uh, he and his brother both have this same emp empathic ability with regards to animals uh, that we've seen Book demonstrate in the past. So it's an interesting um, situation. The planet is under the control of the Emerald Chain. They've basically extorted them. It seems the Emerald Chain is kind of like a protection racket a little bit. Uh, they they come in with a solution to their problems, but, you know, you have to swear loyalty that, to them and all of that. Uh, and Osira, the big bad behind the Emerald Chain, we finally get to meet in this episode. I thought this was an interesting character. I was initially a little like, huh, who is this character? What's she all about? But she's kind of got this earnestness to her that's at the same time threatening. And and I don't know, I think she really works as a villain. And I'm, I'm curious to see more about her. Uh, she's definitely a force to be reckoned with in this episode, and I think the way the episode deals with her um, works quite well in that kind of threat factor that she has. We also get some uh, more insight into Rin's character, the Andorian that we picked up a couple of episodes ago, uh, played by... Uh, Mary Wiseman's husband, which uh, I've mentioned before, but in this episode we get a, a lovely scene between Rin and Tilly, which was kind of cool, husband and wife on screen together. I'm kind of reminded of way back when Alexander Siddig and now visitor Kira and Bashir on Deep Space Nine were in a relationship, had gotten married and, and had scenes together, so that was kind of fun. But yeah, we, we learn that Osira really wants Rin back, for reasons that don't become clear until the end of the episode, but she's willing to go to extraordinary lengths to get him back. And the Discovery crew under Saru, of course, isn't just going to hand him over. So you get this interesting kind of standoff. They're under orders from Admiral Vance to not engage the Emerald Chain, so they do some interesting stuff to get around that, which uh, brings us to Detmer's part of the story, which I thought was a lot of fun as well. She pilots Book's ship, against uh, Osiris' ship, the Viridian, and, you know, manages to take out its weapons and, and all this stuff. So great scene for Detmer, great uh, character development for her. She's kind of getting her confidence back. Uh, pairing her with Rin, I thought was interesting, and seeing those two personalities face off against each other. Rin, of course, uh, lacking a lot of confidence, and Detmer as well in that boat, but kind of by putting them together, she's able to recapture some of that and, and model that for Rin as well, which I thought was a really interesting way to take her character. There's an interesting through line in this episode with regards to identity and names and what we choose uh, to be called. 
So we have that coming through with Book, who apparently went by a different name before. This feels very familiar to Kraft's story in the Short Treks episode clip, so yet another kind of callback to that uh, with regards to, you know, Kraft not giving his true name and saying his lover would give him his true name. There's kind of something about names and identity uh, that seems to be a thing in this era with... Um, I don't know, humans or, or certain cultures or groups or something in the galaxy. I don't know if craft and book are kind of from the same culture or if it's just something that's kind of spread out. I'm not sure, but th it, it was an interesting parallel that I definitely did note. And of course, speaking of identity, we get Adira uh, kind of expressing their desire to go by they, them pronouns as opposed to she, her pronouns and kind of standing up for uh, what they, they see their identity as. I thought that was a really great scene. I loved the, the it was just, you know, very easy, you know, actually I prefer going by this and Stamets, okay. And then from then on, the language is just they, them, as opposed to she, her. And I, I thought that was a really good uh, model of that kind of um, behavior and that kind of pre preference. It's really easy to accommodate someone's preferences and how they see themselves. And I love that the show was able to kind of model that uh, and show that it's not a big deal. You know, it's not, there's no questioning of it. There's no pushback against it. It's just, that's what they prefer. So let's go with that. So the final resolution to the main plot, which is these uh, sea locusts that have kind of swarmed in and, and Osira has, you know, been pushing them back, but they're, they're coming back in and that kind of final solution to get them to leave. It's a little bit woo woo, you know, this whole um, book empathy thing with animals a little bit, you know, uh, um, not really explained, but that's okay. Like I said before, that's kind of part and parcel with Star Trek. They kind of have this kind of uh, element to it as well. So I thought it was a it was a good message with you know the cooperation and helping out from Discovery and that sort of thing. So uh, yeah, I was kind of going hmm, a little bit at that part, but uh, you know I th I think it works overall with the kind of um, what we've seen before of book and the world of, of Star Trek discovery and stuff. So, and of course, Osira has fled to fight another day after being bested uh, by Detmer in book's ship. So I really liked book's final decision that he's kind of bought into what Starfleet's about and what Burnham's trying to do on discovery and uh, decides to stay on discovery, you know, with Saru's permission, presumably we'll get that kind of conversation or if not, maybe it happened off screen, but it looks like book is kind of part of, of what they're trying to do now and we'll stick around. So I think he's a good fit. I think, you know, animal conservationist, as I've said before, is an interesting role uh, in Star Trek. And uh, I'm excited to see how he fits in with the crew further. Up until now, he's been fairly separate from the crew. You know, welcome back to the bridge, Mr. Booker. And, and he's just been kind of a visitor. But now it'll be interesting to see him integrate more with the crew. So curious to see how that looks as we go forward. We learn from Rin towards the end of the episode that the kind of desperation that the Emerald Chain is exhibiting is due to the fact that they are running out of dilithium. And that's kind of why they've been pushing so hard. Uh, I think this is another interesting development. I think that'll inform a lot of uh, what happens going forward. You know, will there be some kind of diplomatic uh, thing between the Federation and Osiris forces? I hope so. I like that Star Trek ideal, but I think we there is definitely more uh, conflict to come with Osira and the Emerald Chain. So, uh, of course, we also have some movement on the burn question in that we've we've discovered what the uh location what the the focal point the the starting point for the burn was and uh, i'm curious to see where that goes and also this music that's kind of pervaded different cultures we get a little bit of uh, insight into that the other thing i haven't really talked about is Giorgio and her uh, what's going on with her. So this is definitely going to be continued in the next episode, it looks like. But uh, we learn that, yeah, there's there's something going on with her. She feels she's dying. Uh, th these scans have revealed something pretty grim. Not sure what to say about that until we learn more, which it looks like we're going to do in the next episode, which is uh, Terra Firma Part 1. And I'll note, Terra you know, we commonly refer to the people from the mirror universe, the human beings from the mirror universe as Terrans. So curious to see what that's all about.
Well, those are my thoughts on this episode. What did you think? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much to the Patreon supporters for your help in bringing these episodes to you. I really couldn't do it without you. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, remember to check in on your friends and family. Tell them you love them. Until next time, as always, live long and prosper.